Well, there's many books that document the steps. The first stage is, is destroying a person's identity, whether it be a, an individual, a family, a group, um, a society, a culture. So the first thing you have to do is destroy their identity. That's what the masking was. As you know, it was a destroying of identity. And it's an, a technique that was used in Germany in the Second World War. It's been used in many countries. Um, if you look at the documentary or the book called The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein, I believe it is, mm -hmm. um, the documentary shows you exactly how they've been doing this over and over again using the same model. So first you break down the identity. You keep them in a constant state of fear and threat. And then you reward for conforming. And then you work on creating a new identity that is in a direct parallel with what you want to use these people for. So if you're a cult leader and you want to use them to assassinate people, then that's what you build them up to uh, do and to believe is absolutely essential. Um, so there's a series of steps that all were played out in COVID and are still being used right now. Um, but in a nutshell, it's first destroy their identity, create so much stress and fear that the only way you can get a, a sense of relief or safety is by following the dictates of your captor. Then succumbing to the creation of a new identity, even if it means you've got to kill your own family to maintain that identity. And that's part of the brainwashing. I mean, f forever we were singing songs when I was a paratrooper that had, uh, you know, things like kill a commie for mommy and um, to celebrate your victory, you'll make a necklace of their teeth. Um, and and I, I could sing all these songs that we used to sing in marching, but it's constantly droning in and driving in deeper and deeper into your nervous system and your emotions that you must eliminate these people and the paradox is we don't know anything about these people. That's why I got out of the military. I refused to kill people without knowing the truth of why I was killing them. I, I can't trust that the government is honest. The more I investigated this, the more I realized how corrupt it was. And the more I realized that as a paratrooper, I was actually just the sharp edge of a sword to steal resources from people, whether it be oil, whether it be minerals, it, this is going on all the time. And so uh, brainwashing is really um, a means by which you either force or coerce people into changing their identity into one that is controllable and conforms to an agenda that is not your own. Isn't another thing repetition of a message from an authority figure. Isn't that also a, a tactic of brainwashing? Yes, it's constant. It, it, it's a constant message. There's a very strong rank and hierarchy system in it. Um, there's punishments for jumping rank, you know, like in the military, if I have a question, I have to go to the person that's one rank above me. But if I go to someone two ranks above me and ask that question, that's considered um, it's considered inappropriate behavior. It's punishable. And because the message gets filtered down on a need to know basis, because they know that the more you know, the more likely you are to wake up to the fact that you're doing something immoral, unethical, or illegal and won't do it. So what they do is, you know, not even the president has a clue what's going on most of the time, especially with regard to secret space programs and secret military programs. I mean, you're, especially you're Biden. Biden you're, has no memory anyhow. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know how to do his shoelaces up. So. <laughs> right, yeah. So the, the, the hierarchy of control is really a protective means by which nobody can get the truth so that they can never really evaluate if what they're doing is moral or ethical. Mm -hmm. So you were saying they they destroy the identity. Would you say that also preventing people from going to work to a degree broke down their identity? Of course it did. It not only broke down their identity, it put them in tremendous fear and stress. I mean, imagine mm. 
you know, having a $5,000 a month mortgage, a couple of kids, three kids, two cars, uh, you know, you got bills to pay, right? And, you know, mm-hmm. there's a cost of living. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you're down to, what, peanuts from the government, which is what they're trying to do. Really, you know, what what they're trying to implement is the equivalent of a socialist or a communist agenda. And yeah. people that I know that came from socialist Germany, um, like um, Andreas Wecker, who I interviewed mm-hmm. on my podcast, describes – seeing what's going on over here is exactly what went on in in Germany behind the behind the wall and warned that Americans are dangerously asleep. You got Vera Sharov on Children's mm-hmm. Health Defense who just released her yeah. documentary series and lived through the Holocaust. We've got Holocaust survivors that are saying this is not new. I've seen this before. So um and the other thing I guess we saw in 2020 was you know on on the mainstream news every evening telling us how many people had died and it was just constant so yeah. you got you got the fear factor and the repetition yeah so you're fearing you know you're putting people into a state of fear that well if they don't do what they're told they're going to die or they're going to kill someone else if they don't yeah. do it yeah yeah and the thing too is is that, uh then you have all the censorship because the truth is a very dangerous thing for anyone to get a hold of when they're fighting an enemy that doesn't want you to have the truth. So the greater the degree of censorship, you know, the more coercion there is involved. I mean, honestly, like, forgive me if you're listening to this and you did get the... It's not my intention to hurt anybody, but I must say... Who in their right mind would let someone vaccinate them with a vaccine that when you open the box to see what the ingredients and what the side effects are is completely blank, Hmm. right? I mean, people do more research to buy a toaster oven than they do to uh, uh, their children. And that just goes to show you how completely confused people are about, A, the realities of, of... the the world we live in and the corporate influences and the criminal influences and B how confused they are about the reality of, of the efficacy of most drugs and medicines mm. and how confused they are about their responsibility to protect life and their own life and their children's life. If you enjoyed this clip, press here for the full episode and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.